Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen looking at hangars, transits, scanners, radars and mission sharing today. This is a summary of Calling All Devs, Friends with Missions. Grimhex hangars. So are there plans on opening the Grimhex hangars up soon? These will be opened up at some point and are on the backlog to be completed. Currently, they're working on Lawville, space stations, and other soon-to-be-announced things. Most locations will use hangars over landing pads or a mixture of the two. Landing pads will be more for the sort of like basic refuel and rearm. Opening the hangars up allows for more traffic in and out of Grimhex and is the sort of like safer um, landing of ships and storage of ships in a much more easy fashion. Landing zone connections. So will some moon and planet locations be connected with vast trams and railways of public transport spanning large portions of the planet? If they had trains connecting long distance landing zones, hub locations, mission areas or whatever, it would be quite time consuming for them to build them and to ride them. It's much easier, especially at the moment, just to jump in a ship and travel there. They may add this in the future, though, there are just no plans currently for giant networks of trains spanning the entire planet. Uh, they have previously talked about a procedural system for placing roads, so something similar to that might happen for trains in the future. Also, currently, when they update the procedural tech for planets and moons, it can change the terrain. So in the short term, it would be pretty pointless spending a couple of uh, weeks of man hours to place these tracks by hand, only then to change them in a few weeks' time. At some point, though, they will have a more final version of their planet generation tech, which should mean the terrain is permanent, or, or mostly permanent, thereafter. This is also one of the reasons that they don't have fixed racetracks on planets and moons at the moment in the PU, because the terrain is currently in flux. Scanners and radars. So, uh, they talked a bit about exactly what scanners, radars and pinging is and sort of like plans for them in the future. Radars allow you to passively detect signatures within their boundaries, within the radar's bounds. EM, CS and IR are all different signatures that can be detected. So that's electromagnetic, cross-section and infrared. There's also a new one, RS, which is resources or mineable targets at the moment. But based on the distance a signature is away from your radar, a target is more or less likely to be detected. Items, players, ships, um, mineables, they will all generate some form of signal. Both the radar and the object it's detecting have a sphere of influence for these different signals. If these intersect, then an object can be detected. In the example they give, so say there's a spaceship that's generating a 1000 EM and 500 IR signal. Because the sensors fall off at a rate of one unit per meter, that then means it generates enough EM to be detected a thousand meters away from itself. So your radar might have a radius of 5,000 and it's set so that at that 5,000 range, you can detect any EM that is at a minimum of one. So 5,000 meters away from your ship, you have this big radius from the ship and then the object is creating a 1,000 EM. So in a thousand meter basic radius of detection at one. So as long as you're within 6,000 meters of that target, you'll be able to detect it because those two circles, those two spheres are basically intersecting. Beyond that, that's where the radar would fall off and you wouldn't be able to detect them. These values and areas will be more exposed to the players via some form of UI at some point, or at least displayed on the HUD or whatever. They do obviously need a lot of work. They need to be fine-tuned and balanced and they will see a lot of iteration. Pings. So at the moment, ping items are all pretty similar right now. So it doesn't matter uh, what ship you're using, pings are pretty much the same. Eventually they will come in different flavors and different uh, abilities to detect things. But pinging basically acts as a multiplier to the radars, allowing objects to be detected at a greater distance. Objects and entities that are detected by a ping but are out of your radar range will all be grouped with other proximate signals and then they will appear as a sensor blob and sensor areas on your HUD. So it will say there's th something over here in this general large area but you're not sure exactly what it is or how many of them there are. 
These blobs can be pretty massive, but they do sort of like give you the distance how far they are away from you on your HUD at the moment. There's going to be some more info sort of exposed here in the future too. It will get added to the HUD. So they want some of the values of the signatures shown and what type of signatures are detected in that area. So you can see if something's a resource potentially, or maybe an enemy ship um, or something like that. Just a bit more information. Scanning. So currently when you hover your cursor and when you're in a ship over a selected item, it will give you information on that object or item. So this can be uh, another ship and it will tell you what faction, who owns it, the amount of cargo on the ship, its HP. If you're hovering over a mineable object, then it will tell you uh, about the amounts of resources that that object has in it. They are also expanding the system to planets, space station, and HUD items as well. All of these systems are going to be getting balanced, tweaked, and variety added to them. So expect lots of different types of item you can detect, as well as info on them, uh, and more customization in your choice of radars and scanners that you can equip. They're not locked to the hull or, or whatever. You can change those items out just like any other. They talk about ones that are potentially more suited for detecting cargo and giving you more precise information on cargo or life forms who exactly is on a board on ships or in colonies on planets. How many life forms are there? This will probably be quite good in the future working out if it, something's got loads of animals around it or, or whatever, um, as well as ones that might look at armament, DPS uh, and that sort of stuff as well. Mission sharing. So they talked about the tier zero mission sharing that will be available. Uh, this is going to be available to parties. So you literally group up with some other characters, um, join a party together. The party leader will then be able to see everyone's accepted missions. He will then be able to say, I want to share this particular mission with everyone from those party members. When this happens, everyone in the party will get a notification and they will be able to accept that particular mission that was put forward. It becomes the active mission for everyone that accepted it and other missions that you had will be basically pushed uh, to the bottom and become sort of inactive, although the timers and stuff will still tick down. Basically, you can only have one active tracked mission at a time at the moment, but you can technically have as many missions as you want, sort of like um, accepted. This allows players that have access to outlaw missions to share them with lawful players and vice versa. Everyone in your party that has accepted that mission will be able to complete objectives, push the mission forward, but only the mission owner will be able to make mission-based choices that might happen, choosing conversation options, that sort of stuff. If a choice is to let someone live or die, then typically if someone shoots them in the head, that decision won't matter, even if it was a conversation option that the mission owner had. If the mission requires a specific quest item, then that item must get to the place it needs to get to. Um, this could be like a virus to upload on a computer. The original mission owner might be the one that has that, but he might have given it to someone else. If there's a race or the mission owner has to get somewhere, then it's still them that needs to get somewhere. Um, they have to specifically get there, not just anyone in their party. So some missions will basically be entirely completable by anyone in your party, whereas others may require um, an extra step or the mission owner to get somewhere, if you see what I mean. Everyone will share in the mission rewards, literally um, split evenly across everyone in the tier zero implementation anyway. Uh, and this can be financial rewards or reputation based or both. This um, can obviously damage your reputation if you're an outlaw doing lawful missions or a lawful person doing outlaw missions, if you see what I mean. You can leave the party or pass leadership to someone else um, if you're the party leader. However, if you are the mission owner and you leave the party, the mission leaves with you. Um, and that's that's true of whatever. If the if someone gets kicked out of the party it was the mission owner, then that mission leaves with them. Hopefully, there will be some ways to prevent abuse of people leaving just before the mission ends. So if the mission um, owner goes, ha, I want all the reward to myself, jumps out, that's obviously not ideal. As well as if there's a party leader who kicks everyone else out except for uh, the mission owner so that just them, just th those two get the reward, that's obviously not great. Um, either. But that sort of stuff can be prevented by just going and partying with trusted people, or if they ever do that, then don't party with them ever again. I am very excited and looking forward to mission sharing. Uh, I want them to get that in as soon as possible, and so hopefully they'll get that tier zero implementation out shortly. But tell me what you think in the comments below. Are you super excited about mission sharing? Uh, are you excited about anything else we talked about, or disappointed, or do you think something should work in a different way? 
please tell me in the comments below. During December, we are giving away a Star Citizen game package, Saber Raven and Citizen Con 2948 goodies pack. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning those is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos made during December. More details are linked below. And if you are considering getting a new gaming PC or upgrading first, please consider the Shadow Cloud Gaming Service. It leverages the power of your internet connection to turn a device, be it phone, laptop, tablet, or PC, into a powerful Windows 10 gaming rig. I've seen people just use their phones and a gamepad now to play Star Citizen. It works great for me in Star Citizen Alpha 3.3.7, and the Shadow guys keep on updating both their hardware and software. Your mileage may vary with Shadow, though, based on your internet connection, so please bear that in mind. It is subscription-based, and using the code BOARDGAMER will net you a discount. If you don't have Star Citizen yet, then please check out the links below as well to get 5,000 UEC, the in-game currency, as a bonus. Any comments and feedback is appreciated. Please take care, guys, and I'll see you in the verse.